Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Josh and welcome back to another FTB Quick Tips and today I'm going to be talking about the Tesseracts. Now this is a pretty cool addition to the mod pack. I'm in the FTB Ultimate pack right now and so I guess let's just get right into it. So as you guys can see in front of me, I got a whole bunch of different machines that are going to be required to make your Tesseracts. Now the first machine you're going to need is this pulverizer and the pulverizer is crafted just by taking a piston, two flint, two copper, our redstone reception cell and which is crafted or reception coil which is crafted by taking two redstone and one gold and you're also going to need a machine frame which is crafted by taking four iron three or four glass and a gold and you're going to want to plop it down in your world and add some power to it with using engines so the power i'm using is just pete engines these are from bill well pete isn't from Billcraft, but the engines are a Billcraft addition and so use any of those engines they'll work you just the higher tier engine the more energy you'll throw and we can see here it adds this thing called mj or minecraft jewels and it fills up your little internal storage right here now the first thing you want to do is pulverize four obsidian and that means you're gonna have to go craft or go get four obsidian throw it into your pulverizer and you'll get this obsidian pulverized obsidian so once you get that you can head over to your next machine which is this induction smelter and the induction smelter is crafted by taking two invar ingots two copper a redstone reception coil a machine frame and a bucket and what we're going to do is we're going to throw this four pulverized obsidian in here and then we're going to add lead to it so we're going to flip our lever on and as you guys can see it's going to now smelt it and it's going to turn it into hardened glass and hardened glass is something that's going to be needed and it's a crucial recipe for this so once we get this hardened glass there we go we take it and now we're just about done with crafting here our tesseract well the very very basic one so what we do is we take this hardened glass glass like that we place a diamond in here and then we place tin around the outsides of it like that and you get yourself a tesseract frame now you may be thinking to yourself, ooh that's easy, but no, this tesseract frame actually has no uses, so you can't even place it down, you, I mean you could throw it down, it's a relatively large block, but it has no uses, and that's where these next two machines come in handy. What you're going to need to do with these two machines, and the first one here is a magma crucible, and that's actually crafted by taking a bucket, two uh, nether bricks, two copper, a machine frame, and a redstone reception cell, and what you're going to want to do is play, place four ender pearls in your magma crucible per tesseract so what it's going to do and since i have them set up right here it's going to send it straight over into this into our liquid transposer so as soon as that crafts you can see this is actually collecting it from over on the other guy so you can see like that and you're going to need four like i said four per uh, tesseract frame so if you're trying to make two-way tesseracts, you have to make you have to use eight ender pearls, but that's not really a big deal because ender pearls are pretty easy to craft. It takes a minimum stone plus four iron, or you can just kill endermen. But um, if you guys don't have any endermen, or you're playing in peaceful or something like that, you can always use your minimum stone. So now you have this liquid transposer filled with a hundred MB of your ender pearl juice or whatever you want to call it. You're going to need to throw it, well it's in our liquid transposer, well first of all which is crafted by taking a bucket, two glass, two copper, a redstone reception coil, and a machine frame. And what you're going to want to do is take your tesseract frame and throw it in the top here. And you can see, now it sucks up the tesseract frame and it's actually going to transpose all this ender juice into the tesseract. Now. As you guys can see, I have all these right here. This is required for all these machines. You have to remember that or else they won't run. And some machines like this Magma Crucible, it actually requires a lot more energy than everything else. But um, you can see now I have it filling up. So, now back to our Liquid Transposer. As you can see, we have just finished it. We have an Unattuned Tesseract. And now this is something that's needed for everything else. So the Unattuned Tesseract is what we're going to use for the other creation. So I'm just going to stock myself up with it. And um, I'm going to use it to craft the three different kinds of Tesseracts. The Item Tesseract, the Liquid Tesseract, and the Energy Tesseract. So the Item Tesseract is crafted like so. You take one Unattuned Tesseract. You place tin on top like that. Then you place silver on the sides like this. Or excuse me, I forgot one thing. Um, we're going to need to make a pneumatic servo, which is taken by two iron like that, two glass, and redstone in the middle. And we're actually going to need three of these. And there we go. 
one, two, three. That's four. But um, so now we're going to take it, start this again, on the tune Tesseract there, and then we're going to need to place a piece of tin on top, tin on the bottom, silver, and then we're going to place these pneumatic servo on the bottom and there we go we get ourselves an item tesseract so next thing we're going to need or next item you can craft is the liquid tesseract and that's crafted just by taking an unattuned tesseract placing copper on top silver or tin here then silver in the middle and then a pneumatic servo on the bottom and then the last recipe which i seem to not work but it's required or what it requires is a piece of unattuned te or an unattuned tesseract then you also need this electrum ingot which is crafted just by taking silver dust and gold dust you get electrum ingot or electrum dust which makes these ingots and when you place the electrum ingot on top unattuned tesseract in the middle and then you place um what is it silver right here and here a pneumatic servo oh not a pneumatic servo um a redstone reception coil and then you need two lead on the bottom but that for some reason doesn't work. So let's try with the redstone servo. Yeah, so you can see it doesn't work, but um, the recipe for the energy tesseract, energy tesseract right here, you can see that's what it requires. I don't know why it's not working for me, but um, I'm not making this up. It's so just seriously not working and I don't really know why. It's kind of annoying, but um, oh. That would be why, because we need this redstone conductance coil. So that's actually something different. The redstone conductance coil, if you guys didn't notice that, requires an a electrum ingot like this with redstone on the sides like that. And there you go, your redstone conductance coil. You place it here on the bottom, that there. Now we need another electrum ingot. But um, we place electrum on top, silver, uh, silver, silver, and tin, tin, and sorry lead lead and we there we go we get ourselves an energy tesseract so it's very very simple so let's head over here to our examples that we have now the first example i'm going to do is i'm going to take these diamonds from this chest over here and i'm going to pump it into this chest over here and what we need is of course to pump anything out of a chest you're going to need a wooden pipe with a engine but then what we want to do is right click these tesseracts and as you guys can see I have JCAP Gaming 1 set up but what I can do is I can set a frequency and I can rename it so JCAP Gaming 2 just for instance hit plus and there we go and now if we head over to this other tesseract you can see I can select JCAP Gaming 2 and it syncs it up with this now these tesseracts come with a few different options your redstone control which is does it emit redstone power if it is if items are being sent to it so you can have that as disabled enabled or um, <laughs> enabled with a high signal strength or you can have this configuration where it sets to owner only or public access so that's something if you're running on a ftb server uh, that works but then you can also have it send only receive only and send slash receive mode so that's pretty much all so now we have to do is just pump that and you can see that we're going to have these guys come right out of the chest and in a second you'll see them come right through over here and send it straight into this chest so you can see just like that and it's simple as one two three oh uh, it's pretty basic uh, if you guys missed that I mean it's still going so it's really really cool how it works and it's a really great use but um, next let's talk about the energy tesseract and that's going to link in with our other tesseract with the liquid tesseract but the energy tesseract basically is the same setup here where you set a frequency so let's say frequency one do energy one you can add that and these guys do not actually link up with other kinds of tesseracts so if it's an energy they won't go to the same frequency as a liquid a liquid won't go with an energy or a uh, item item won't go with liquid and so on but you can see we have energy in this frequency set to one and what we can do is we can actually just pump this and what it's going to do is it's going to send power straight over to this tesseract so because it's sending the power through here this is hooked up to a pump so it's going to use the power that this is sending to power this pump so let's talk about the liquid guy real quickly and the liquid is the exact same you set your frequency on both and you're able to transport liquid so here i have my liquid set up to a uh, zycraft tank and i actually have the liquid tesseract well if we head into creative i'll show you you have to have the liquid tesseract touching the actual valve with the zycraft tank but as you can see i can just set it here 
set the frequency to the same. And now if we throw the power on over here, uh, for the energy tesseract, it's going to start sucking up items like that. And you can see, simple as that, items are going to come through, water is going to fill this up. And very, very efficient and a great way. Now, you guys have to remember that if you do do this out of chunks, you have to make sure you have chunk loaders or world loaders or world anchors or whatever. That's going to make it so that your chunks will stay loaded and these guys will work even if you're not in the same chunk. Otherwise, they'll be disabled until you get in that chunk. That's just something how Minecraft works. And it's it's a little annoying, but that's how the game is ran. But um, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I have hopefully thoroughly explained the uh, Tesseracts in the game. And if you guys enjoyed it, could you please leave a rating? Let me know how I did. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.